Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Jimmy Dore Show. I'm here with Steph Samarano and Ron Placone. Hello, Jimmy. Hello. Hi. Okay, so... Um, Our War Department, it's, it's, it should, they call it the Defense Department. It should be called the Invasion Department, right? It should be called the Offense Department because we're not defending ourselves against anybody. <laughs> we're just creating problems. In, in, <laughs> our Defense Department is a lot like Baskin Robbins of War. Uh, try every flavor, and there's, one, uh, there's a new one every week. <laughs> uh, so here is General Mattis. Uh, just, to call, just the other day. Let's, what let's we listen. have to look at is the destabilizing influence that Iran has consistently portrayed uh, and demonstrated throughout the region. <laughs> what? So the United States invaded Iraq illegally, killed hundreds of thousands, displaced millions, invaded Afghanistan. Still there 17 years later, occupying them. For what reason? Did Libya, invaded Libya, turn it into a failed state? The most advanced country in Africa. Turn it into a failed state with open slave markets. We did that. Afghanistan, Iraq, Libya, Syria. We're helping ISIS. Literally helping ISIS and Al-Qaeda, the dregs, the worst terrorists that ever in the history of the world. We're hoping they take over Syria. And what does this guy say? What is this? Tell me what this guy says. What we have to look at is the destabilizing influence that Iran has consistently portrayed uh, and demonstrated throughout the region. The destabling, destabling actions that Iran has taken in the region. You mean like bombing Syria without even knowing what happened first? Oh, wait, that was us. <laughs> you mean like that kind of destabil? I mean like destabilizing, like when we, I don't know, set the Mideast on fire and we keep adding gasoline to it every day? You mean destabilizing what we're doing in Yemen, siege warfare, which is a war crime? Starving people to death? That's what we're doing. Children, we're starving them. You mean that kind of destabilization? <laughs> this is awesome. We don't even really have to look in the Middle East to see what we've done. We we do this kind of stuff to our own country. Look at Puerto Rico, how we've abandoned them. And the destruction in Puerto Rico after a hurricane and that we can't give them any support. I, so I'm supposed to worry about Iran's influence right? in the Middle East? I know. I'm worried about the United States' it's, lack of influence in Puerto Rico and helping my brothers and sisters there. Great point. How about our influence in America? How about the United States government's influence in America and our territories? How about we work on that? <laughs> well, here he's got more to say. And the only reason that the murderer Assad is still in power. The murderous wow. Assad. The murderer Assad. <laughs> so th again, this is how propaganda works. They want to go to war with Iran. They want to overthrow Assad. He's a murderer. We're not murderers. We didn't murder anybody in Iraq, Libya, Afghanistan, Syria, Yemen, Niger. We don't do it. <laughs> He's a mur Assad's a murderer. <laughs> and Benjamin Netanyahu is uh, hugging those Palestinians to death. He's not shooting them in broad daylight. Right? Netanyahu, they're not shooting medics, are they? In broad daylight and journalists? Yeah. Yeah, shooting journalists and medics in broad daylight. But Assad's a murderer. I got, okay, I got you. I'm not saying Assad isn't a murderer. I'm saying it's interesting who you get upset with when they murder. Mm -hmm. You only get upset with the countries you want to overthrow. Isn't that weird? Yeah, you have a certain agenda because you are, you are part of the destruction profiteering department. Ha! Uh -huh. Again, this is not the Department of Defense. This is the Department of Offense. This is how it works. This is how you get to go into Iran. Primary reason is because Iran is stuck by them, reinforced them, funded them. Iran has stuck by Assad, reinforced them. You mean, so you're saying Iran is to Syria what the United States is to Israel. Is, is, that, what <laughs> is that what you're saying? We're propping up Saudi Arabia, who funds ISIS, <laughs> for Christ's sake. 
I mean, so that's what I'm talking about. So when you see, it's all lies. So when these guys say, when they all go, oh, Trump's a liar, they're all liars. That's why it's this crazy. Oh, what do you think? Lying got invented by Trump? That's what they're acting like. And again, this isn't to say Trump isn't a liar. This is to say they're all liars. And democracy isn't based on trust. Well, you got to trust somebody, Jimmy. No, you don't. Democracy isn't based on trust. Democracy is based on mistrust. That's why you have transparent governments. That's why you're not supposed to have court proceedings in secret, like the FISA court. You're not supposed to have a secret court. That's not a court. Wow. Our, our Defense Department tries to sell more wars than Apple tries to push iPhone updates. <laughs> Eventually, we're going to reach the level of two new wars for every one new Honda Civic model. (laughs) (laughs) Mattis loves war so much he shares a missile porn subscription with Brian Williams. Did you know that? (laughs) They sit around and wax their missiles. (laughs) And right, so right under that, so you notice he's blaming Iran for Assad. Uh, staying in power because everyone sufficiently hates Assad. The propaganda has worked. And uh, so he's like, well, we'll we'll use that to invade Iran. So everybody hates Assad. Russia. Uh, go, go ahead, Ron. You want to say well, something? Well, I was just going to add something that's like more kind of like just something as an aside to all this and connecting it to the bigger thing. It's not engaging in what about ism. To entertain the notion, as we do on this show, that people that think in the economy of war don't have our best interest at heart. That's not what aboutism to say, well, they're liars too. No, it's relevant to say they're liars too because they live in the economy of war and they're not on our team. Whether they like Trump or not, they ain't on our team. It doesn't matter. Uh, the, let's not forget, according to Chomsky, the biggest uh, human rights atrocity to be committed in this century has been committed by the United States in Iraq. And we did that. (laughs) So everybody's like, oh, Putin's a maniac in Crimea. What the hell do we do? We did the worst thing ever this century. And then we ordered torture to cover it up. A a torture program. A torture program. That's who we are. We're better than ISIS. We had a torture program. A torture program. And there were some folks in it. There were some folks in it. And so he doesn't criticize Russia there. He, he's doing he's using Iran because he wants to go to war with Iran. All these the whole establishment wants to go to war with Iran. Well, he initially what I read, he was for the Iran nuclear deal. Yeah. He was for that. Uh-huh. So what's changing his mind? Why does he now want to c- create war with Iran? You know, I just read a little bit about him. He's been serving in the military since 18 years old. This guy is a military guy. Uh-huh. So isn't that in his blood to perpetuate the war. will of the military? Of course. Right? Of course. And I just want to say this. What do you think? That, he's a peacenik? Uh, I just want to read this w- really quick thing. He served in Afghanistan and Iraq and led all U.S. Marine forces in the Middle East as commander um, and he was also in charge of the 1st Marine Division in the initial attack and subsequent stability operations in Iraq in 2003. So he doesn't seem to me like I understand his dedication and I appreciate that, but I doesn't seem anything here that I can trust his vision for peace. <laughs> no, he's, that's, there is no stability right now, everybody in that, Iraq. Right. So. Spanky Dennison, underneath this video that was tweeted out by Fox News, he wrote this. The Trump regime can't say one negative thing about Putin. Stunning. So after this guy's trying to get us into Iran, what you're worried about is he doesn't want to get us into Russia. (laughs) Hey, the guy's warmongering us into a war in Iran, and you were like, why doesn't he warmonger us into war with Russia? That's so that's the culture we're living in. This like you, we want you to start being more bellicose and hawkish with a, a, a nuclear power. Anybody could pick on Iran. Why don't you try picking on a nuclear? This is what people are saying now. And that's just not regular people. That's all co- people in the media, people in politics, everybody. People that say they're on the left. People who say they're on the I left mean, are, are saying shit like this. 
And, and, and hey, Spanky, here's Donald Trump. Many dead, including women and children, in, my, in mindless chemical attack in Syria. Area of atrocity is in lockdown and encircled by Syrian army, making it completely inaccessible to outside world. President Putin, Russia, and Iran are responsible for backing animal Assad. Big price. Is that, is that enough for you? Would you like him to be more bellicose? Would you like him to be more hawkish? Would you like him to be more of a maniac? Because that's what you guys say. He's a maniac who's going to start a nuclear war. And then you're like, hey, why don't you start a nuclear war? And tip of the hat to uh, that gentleman. He's, well, he's the one who found that uh, Trump tweet. Ichimoku. <laughs> can you say that guy's name? Ichimoku uh, wa. Rec- yeah. Hashtag Ichimoku wa. There. Yeah. Is that a saying? I... I think so. Ichimoku wa. It sounds like yeah. a greeting or something. I think it... And then yeah. it's a hashtag reconnect Julian. So he's on the right side. So, um... Okay. Just so you know, the people who want to get rid of Assad, do you know who takes over when Assad leaves? ISIS. Just like who took over in Libya after we left. Same thing would happen in Syria. These guys don't give a shit. They don't care. This is nonstop war. This is Orwell. I know Orwell was just a book. It's amazing how accurate it was. Because we're living it. Yeah, it's like that dude had a crystal ball. It's amazing. Yeah, I, it I get really it. Is. People say to me, well, you know, it was just a book. I know, but it's amazing. Yeah. How on point it was. And 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 it was, you know, it was. <laughs> wow. So there you go. Uh, God, God bless uh, the American Defense Department, which is really the, def- the American Invasion Department. That's what they should call it. Why isn't there a war tax? Why don't we have a tax to fund these wars? A pa- hey, this is because how much then the- people will start asking questions. Then people will be That's, like, fuck I mean, this yeah, war we tax. Know. We know why there's not a war tax. Yeah. People are going to start asking questions. It seems to me what I see actually is happening to our country because of these wars. You know, the war tax isn't monetary, right, in us. It's at the disposal of humans. So that's really what our tax has been. Uh, We're losing people's lives and people are homeless and people are living in poverty. And so that's what's really taxing our community. And that there's any American in our country that is shouting for more more war hasn't paid attention this century. At all. Okay. Uh, I just want to show you real quick. Uh, these are tweets. Uh, if NATO has its way in Syria, we wouldn't have any women's basketball team. We would only have jihad suicide teams. This is the Mahardin team with our dear friend Vanessa Beely. She tweeted this out. And they're, they're, look, they're in Syria. They have a women's basketball team. Now, if Assad's not president and the ISIS takes over, which is who, the, who wants to overthrow him, that would not be happening. This is, what, this is who they were fighting against. Those are women in cages. That's who Assad is fighting against, people who put women in cages. This is from BBC's new three-part documentary on the House of Saud. Talks about Saudi funding for Syrian terror groups, Jaish al-Islam. For those who still refer to this group as moderate rebels, please watch to see how Alawite women were paraded in cages in Syria. So that's who we're back. We're backing these people in Syria. This is who we want to take over. Why? Because then a pipeline goes through Syria. And and we get to compete with Russia, Russia selling fossil fuels to Europe. That's what this is all about. So, um, again, so I, I'm glad to be here. This is why they're throttling this show, because Brian Williams is never going to tell you the truth. Chris Cuomo is never going to tell you about that. Rachel Maddow is never going to tell you the truth about Syria. Chris Hayes certainly isn't. Worthless Lawrence O'Donnell's not going to. Wolf Blitzer doesn't even know what... Where Syria is. He just sees the economic opportunity. Yeah, he sees he'll an economic... If, if we decide not to invade, he'll mention the loss of jobs. He That's will. That's what he'll do. He will. Which he did. So that's why we're here. This is why we have a show. This is exactly why we have a show, because the mainstream media won't tell you about this. And uh, they'll they'll just show you... Uh, Madison will go, yeah, Iran's propping up Assad. Yep, yep. 
Iran is propping up Assad, so we should probably go into Iran. That's what they're going to tell you on NBC News. That's what Jim Acosta is going to tell you on CNN. That's what they're all going to tell you. And that's why we have a show. And I'd rather not. I'd rather be touring as a comedian and not feel uh, the uh, impetus or the responsibility to have to debunk this shit. But I just can't take this war anymore. And that's why we're doing this show. Thanks for watching. Please make sure you're subscribed. Even if you think you are, you're probably not. It only takes a second to check. And then you have to ring that bell so they send you a notification when we drop a new video. Otherwise, they won't tell you when we drop new videos. And if you like our show, please help support it. Become a patron. We give you hours of bonus material every week. And we give a live stream. We do a live stream every Saturday at 2 p.m. Pacific time when you could ask us questions and we answer them back. Thanks for your support.